Jamie Buckingham, Shalom from Israel. The night before my cancer surgery, I lay in my little hospital room in Texas. My wife and daughter were just across the street praying. The rest of my family was back in Florida praying. My church in Florida had entered a two-day period of fasting and prayer. Friends across the world were praying, some day and night, for my recovery. But that night, I was alone. The surgeon had come in and read me my rights. He had spoken seriously of the risk of this type of surgery, citing what he called the morbidity rate. I had signed a statement absolving him from guilt in case I died. He wanted me to know that even though he was hopeful, he would be cutting on the veins leading into my heart, and he expected a great deal of bleeding, and there was a possibility I might not survive the operation. After he left, I picked up my Bible and read from Isaiah 58, the same passage my church back home was reading during the two-day fast. And then I closed my eyes and prayed, and Jesus was there beside me. I was no longer alone. In this video, I'm going to take you into the loneliest place on earth, a grave. But instead of talking about death, I want to talk about power for living. Come with me on a bright spring morning, the week before Easter, to the grave of Lazarus in the little town of Bethany here in Israel. Today I'm standing outside the actual tomb where Lazarus was buried in the little town of Bethany, on the backside of the Mount of Olives here in Israel. This street was not here then, nor was the little gift shop across from the entrance of the tomb. But the opening in the rock wall is essentially the same now as it was then. The entrance of the tomb was covered with a large stone, similar to the rolling stone in front of Herod's family tomb in Jerusalem. The huge round rock rolled in a trough, and once it was pushed into place, it was extremely difficult to dislodge by hand. Several men would have to place their shoulders against the rock, and while others pried it out of its groove with some kind of lever in order to open the tomb. Burial in Israel is difficult because the land is so rocky. In Jesus' day, poor people buried their loved ones on top of the ground much as the Bedouin do in the Sinai today. The corpse would be wrapped and then covered with stones to keep away the wild animals. Every year, on the 15th of February, the Jews would take whitewash and paint the stones which covered the body of their loved one. It was this custom that caused Jesus to compare the Pharisees with what he called whited sepulchers, whitewashed tombs which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of dead men's bones. Jesus was standing here when he saw all the people who had come to mourn the death of their friend Lazarus. He looked at Mary and Martha, Lazarus' sisters. Jesus loved them as his own sisters. They were all weeping, his own eyes filled with tears, and suddenly he was weeping with them. His heart was broken not because Lazarus had died, but because God had so much more for all these people, and they couldn't see it. Take away the stone, he ordered. Follow me. Let's go down inside the tomb and see what it's like. This tomb is a natural cave in deep rock. I'm winding my way down several levels to the grave site, which was hewed out of the side of this grave. It's perhaps 30 feet below the surface. Since then, these steps have been cut in the floor, handrail has been added, and a feeble little electric light burns in the ceiling. But on that day, there were no steps, no rail, no light. Once you were placed here, you never left. This was a place of the dead. The body of Lazarus had been prepared above ground. Mary and Martha and pious Jews had let their friends from the synagogue handle the details. The skin had been washed and rubbed with spices to keep down the stench of decaying flesh. 
Then each arm and leg had been wrapped in white gauze like a mummy. Finally, they wrapped the torso, including his neck and head. Then several men using ropes had lowered the body to the bottom of this cave. Climbing down, they placed him on this narrow ledge. A thin shroud was placed on the body, cloth napkin uh, over the bound face. Then the men climbed back up to the surface and a rock was rolled into place, leaving the body in pitch darkness. Then, four days later, a grinding noise was heard far above as the rock was rolled back and then ringing down through this winding passage was the authoritative shout that ever since has echoed into the hearts of hopeless men and women. It was the shout of Jesus, Lazarus, come forth. Someone once remarked that there was so much power and authority in that voice that had not Jesus called Lazarus by name, every grave in the universe would have opened. With a single word, all the processes of death were reversed. Time was turned around. There was a great stirring as life returned to the body. Life, which was given at the mere word of God. The Jews still have a word for that. Heim, life. Lazarus, stumbling in his grave clothes, groped his way toward the voice which had called him. Lazarus, come forth. Crawling up these steps, he emerged into the warm afternoon sun. But it was not enough to have life. He also needed freedom. Take off his grave clothes and let him go, Jesus laughed. So many of us have experienced life in Christ, but have never tasted the freedom of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Today, ask yourself this question. Do I have life, eternal life? Then ask, am I free in the Spirit, or am I bound in the grave clothes of dead tradition? Jesus stands today at your tomb, calling you to Heim, to life.